In this video, I want to cover three easy examples of factoring a quadratic when a is not equal to one. Sometimes when a is not equal to one, it gets tricky and confusing, but there are some actually very basic problems that I want you to be able to identify and not get overwhelmed and realize, oh, this is actually a pretty basic, easy factoring problem. So let me go and show you exactly what I mean. So let's say we have a three X squared, a minus four X plus one. All right. Now I'm not going to get into any crazy factoring techniques or like breaking down the process. I want to show you how to factor or think about factoring by doing it in your head. And that's the way I'm going to kind of talk through these problems. The first thing we want to understand when we're trying to factor a trinomial is that it can be broken down into a product of two binomials. I'm sorry. It can be rewritten as a product of two binomials. That is the whole process of factoring, rewriting an expression as a product. So I know that this quadratic trinomial can be rewritten, rewritten as a product of two binomials. Now, the reason why this is a very basic problem here. It's because I want you to know to recognize something, right? My first term here, or this coefficient is, is, um, is going to be a prime number as well as my one is also going to be a prime number. The reason why that's important is because the only factors that are going to multiply to give us three are three and one. The only factors that multiply to give us one are going to be one and one. So our options that we have to choose from for as far as being our factors, um, that's going to go inside our binomials is going to be very much limited. So when I want to multiply, like when I'm multiplying this back out, it's going to be three X squared. So therefore that's going to be a three X times X, right? Because three X times X gives me three X squared. Now for my other two terms of my binomials, again, what are my options? It's going to be one and one. Now it's not going to be a positive one and a positive one, because again, we notice that my middle term here is negative. So when my middle term is negative, that means these two factors are both going to be a negative. So therefore my factor is three X minus one and X minus one. Um, and again, you can always go ahead and check back your answers guide by just multiplying back out three X times X is going to give you a three X squared negative one times negative one is going to be a positive one. And then we get the negative four X by multiplying our inner and our outer, right? So three X times negative one is going to be a negative three X and negative one times X is going to be a negative X. And you can see how that is going to give you your negative four X. All right, let's go and take a look at another example. So let's say I have a two X squared plus a five X plus three. All right. Now in this example, um, again, we're kind of working with the same thing here. Notice that my two is prime and my three is prime, right? So we have this as a product of two binomials. All right. Now, what are the only two options here we have for two X for a two X squared? Well, that's going to be a two X and an X, right? What are my only two options for a three? Well, that's going to be a three and a one. Now, in this case, we don't know, should I put the three here and the one there? Or should I swap them around, right? Should I put a one here and a three there? So we do have to do a little bit of a kind of like some thinking here um, to be able to determine where it's going to go. Now I do know since my middle term, since my last term is, um, since my last term is positive, I know both factors have to be both positive, both negative, right? That was the same thing that was up here that I didn't say. So I apologize for that, but notice my middle term here is positive. So therefore I'm going to be dealing with both positive factors. All right. And that was something I did not mention in the last one. So once you know that your last term is positive and your middle term is negative, then you know both of your factors can be both negative. Once you know your last term is positive and your middle term is positive, then both of these factors are going to be positive. All right. Now we know that two X times X gives me a two X squared, right? We know my last two numbers are three and one. We just need to figure out where is it going to go, right? So what we want to do is kind of think about this multiplication here. I want either a three or a one times X and then a two times either one or three. And I want to combine those together to get me a five X. Well, hopefully just with doing a little bit of math here, you can see here, I want my three to be here and my one to be here. Why three times X is a three X two X times one is a two X three X plus two X is going to be a five X. What if you switch them around? What if you did it like this? What if you said, well, what about if I wanted it like this X plus three? Now look what happens here. This is going to give you a X, right? And two X times three X is going to give you a six X. That's going to give you a seven X. We don't want a seven X, right? We want a five X. So three X, right? It's going to be a three X, two X times one is going to be a two X. So therefore three X plus two X equals a five X. And then obviously we can see that the three times one guys is going to give us a three. All right. So now let's go and work on one more simple example here, but now we're going to kind of switch it up. So what if I have a seven T squared plus a two T minus five? All right. Now this one's a little bit different because now it's still an easy problem. And the reason why I still want to consider this an easy problem is because 
my term here is going to be a prime number, and that's a prime number. So I have limited options here that I got to be able to identify for my factors. However, my last term is negative, and that kind of throws a wrench here into our uh, way to be able to solve these because now one of my factors has to be positive. See, in this case, we're always we're dealing with a positive 3 and a positive 1, or a negative, what, a negative 1 and a negative 1, right? We're always kind of dealing with the basic ones. So here, in this case, one of them has to be positive, one of them has to be negative. So when we're doing this multiplying in our head, it's just going to come even more important. So first of all, hopefully you can recognize here, I know that's going to be a 7t, and that's going to be a t. Now, what do I can think about this, though, is one of my numbers that give me 5, a 5 and 1, right? Do I really want to multiply a 5 times 7 to get to 2? No, 5 times 7 is 35, right? So I'm not going to want to put my 5 here. I'm going to want to put my 5 here, right? And then my 1, I'm going to put here. Now, let's go ahead and determine. So hopefully that was easy. Now it's going to determine which would be positive, which should be negative. And that's all going to come into my middle term. Since my middle term is positive, I want the larger of my two products to be positive, right? So let's look at our two products we have. We have a 5 times t, and we have a 7t times 1. Now, which of those two products is larger? Well, it's going to be a 7t times 1, right? 7t times 7t is larger than 5t. So we want this product to be positive. Therefore, I want the 7t to be multiplied by positive 1, and I want the positive t to be multiplied by a negative 5. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is three different examples that are fairly basic to be able to factor. But if you want to go ahead and work on some more difficult examples, then check out the next video that I have for you here.